Jeannie Giornani, the creative marketing director at Disney, was asked about allowing LGBTQ content to be shown to children. Jeannie agreed that he wants children to see the content and that it is, quote, the unspoken thing. I despise those kind of people that want to accuse of Disney of grooming children. Like, but I also want children to see LGBTQ content. Don't you agree? Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Well, that's the... Spoken. Am I going to see a drag queen at, at Disneyland or anything like that? Do you want to do that? Get get a drag queen at Disneyland. Yeah. That'd be cool. That would be cool. I'm sure that would happen at Disneyland. When asked by our OMG undercover journalist if he would authorize drag queens to be present at Disneyland, where children are, mind you, Genie the drag queen said, well, he would love to, and it will happen at some point. From classic Disney princesses to drag queens, the transformation of children's programming at the Walt Disney Company is happening. Welcome to the third installment of the Disney Tapes. As we reported in Disney Tapes 1 and 2, Disney has spent recent years focusing more efforts on their seemingly strange take on diversity and less efforts on the type of content and entertainment that one would expect from a once so consistent family-oriented brand. Now, in Disney Tapes 1, we met Disney's Senior Vice President of Business Affairs, Attorney Michael Giordano. As you'll recall, Michael made it clear that Disney not only blatantly discriminates in their hiring practices, they consistently pass over candidates who are more qualified for candidates who are less qualified, but check the boxes that are consistent with their DEI hiring philosophy. Certainly, there have been times where, you so know, you know. Just, there's no way we're hiring a white male person. It's kind of it's, yeah. unspoken. Uh, there are times when it's spoken. But How would they say it? There's no way we're hiring a white male person. They, you know, the writers and actors will hear all the time, like, uh, you know, I'm looking to hire writers and actors who bring diversity. I'm not, I'm not looking to bring on any more clients who are like, well, they hire no white guys until, that is, they're looking to hire upper-level management. In which case, as we saw in Disney Tapes 2, Dave Mocker, Disney's Director of Production and Finance, claims that the only way you're going to make it into Disney's C-suite is if you're a white Jewish man. A claim that, frankly, I find to be clearly anti-Semitic, without any evidence, and likely not even true. So you think that they wouldn't hire a CSV yes. who's not white or not Jewish? In MD, no. no. There's also a slight glass ceiling for that. I feel like it's not, there's a glass ceiling. It's not quite like being breached yet. You're not going to see a CFO really non, um, I guess, for lack of a word, on white, non Jewish. You'll recall Mocker also talks about Disney's over-the-top insistence on jamming woke storylines and out-of-place diversity characters in places they clearly don't fit creatively. Which now brings us to Disney Tapes Volume 3. From classic Disney princesses to drag queens. The trans formation of children's programming at the Walt Disney Company is in full effect. Not a week goes by without a news headline about potential medical supply shortages, threats to our infrastructure or power grid. And you remember what they pulled during the last pandemic. Certain medications were mysteriously out of stock. No way will I ever let that happen again. In today's unpredictable world, it's all about being prepared for who knows what they have in store for the next pandemic. Our friends and supporters at The Wellness Company have designed this unique prescription-based medical emergency kit that is packed with eight potentially life-saving prescription-only medications, including z pack and Ivermectin, which I use myself while out on the road and starting to feel a bit under the weather. Health is everything, and this is a great opportunity to order a Wellness Company Medical Emergency Kit. The Wellness Company Medical Emergency Kit stands ready to treat over 30 common ailments, ensuring you'll have access to vital medications when you need them most. And now save $45 per kit when you order using the code OMG. Get ready to write this down. Get your wellness company medical emergency kit at twc.health slash OMG. That's twc.health slash OMG. That's twc.health slash OMG. And save $45 per kit today when you use code OMG. 
Now let's meet Disney's creative marketing director, Jeannie Giornani. By day, Jeannie is Disney's creative marketing director. And by night, he's a professional drag queen. According to his LinkedIn page, Jeannie is a Berkeley grad and has a variety of jobs, including working at Netflix and Vice Media. So what exactly does creative marketing director Jeannie Giornani do at Disney? He says his focus is on creative strategy across all Disney's television brands. So what do you do at Disney? Creative marketing director, right? Marketing oh, yeah. Director. So I, what, yeah, what is that? Um, I'm, marketing, I'm a director of a marketer for lots of bunch of brands, but yeah. I started on creative brand, which is young adult brand, young adult TV brand. Yeah. And I was leading social media on that brand, so did all these things for a year. Yeah. Well, a bunch of stuff. Well, okay. To lead their with you. So put together most of these respect and I the creative direction for it. Then I switched over to uh, creative strategy across the television brand. Our brave undercover journalist from our American Swiper program, and you can sign up here, met Jeannie on the dating app Bumble and managed to score a date with the drag queen. Now, before we dive into Jeannie's career at Disney, let's look deeper into his drag queen credentials. Apparently, there is an elite grouping of high-profile drag queens such as Daikon and Tiffany Rose that Jeannie associates with. According to Jeannie, he is a judge and the president of the jury for the AICP Awards show that, according to its website, honors marketing and communications in motion image, an award show that is big in the drag queen mentorship community. And according to Jeannie, he has been able to leverage his status as a prominent drag queen to bolster his personal brand, getting him appointments like his position at the AICP award show and moving him up the ladder at Disney. What I've really done is I've used my drag career, I've been a drag race and doing other things to bolster my personal brand. Like, for example, I also judge and put a work show, straight away work shows. I'm just taking my feet, marketing work shows and had another place to live so I started with jury, as jury president for a number of these awards. I'm going to New York in a month to uh, judge, to be a jury president for the award show. <laughs> what's, what's the award show called? It's like AIC. AICP. It's like the, the Sigma Zero. Very cool. It's all the people in the room with me are the industry and my thoughts. Can you give me a name? Now that we've established that Jeannie is heavy into drag, let's take a look at how Jeannie is operating over at Disney as a creative head for them. Jeannie speaks to our undercover journalist stating he has a four to five month project that will allow an LGBTQ pride campaign to grow across Disney television. So, uh, the current projects and that will take up the rest of the next four months, four or five months, yeah, right. I guess four months, yeah. it will be pride, our pride campaign across the Korea, I don't think totally. I've had it with all my personal and private information being exposed and exploited by big tech and big government, so I'm joining my friend Eric Prince and I'm switching to my new unplugged phone. Protect your privacy, get your very own unplugged phone, go to unplugged.com slash omg, that's unplugged.com slash omg, take your privacy back, unplugged.com slash omg. Jeannie Giornani, the creative marketing director at Disney, was asked about allowing LGBTQ content to be shown to children. Jeannie agreed that he wants children to see the content and that it is, quote, the unspoken thing. I despise those kind of people that want to accuse of Disney of grooming children. Like, but I also want children to see LGBTQ content. Don't you agree? Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Well, that's the spoken thing. Drag queen Jeannie was more than excited to discuss how Disney is ramping up their LGBTQ promotion at parks, content, and entertainment stating that Disney is doing Pride Nights all by themselves without third parties involved and that it is, quote, a big step. I'm not sure that you're at the camera. Okay. I think just started with these projects. Like, last year was the first one. Before this, every private one was uh, third party in partnership with Disney. Like, sure. You know, like they bring in and Disney would help. But now Disney's doing it themselves. So it's okay, it's a big step. When asked by our OMG undercover journalist if he would authorize drag queens to be present at Disneyland, where children are, mind you, Jeannie the drag queen said, well, he would love to, and it will happen at some point.
So, for the drag, like any creative marketing director, am I going to see a drag queen at, at Disneyland or anything like that? Do you want to do that? Get get a drag queen at Disneyland. Yeah. That'd be cool. That would be cool. I'm sure that would happen at some point. Remember, this is a man that is directly impacting what children watch, interact with online, and experience in person through Disney's TV, films, and theme parks. So you might say, drag queens? What's the big deal? I know there's little babies here, but what are your ears? <laughs> well, it has been widely reported on multiple instances where the normalization of drag queens pushed on children through such means as drag queen story hour in schools and children's programming is being used to radicalize and sexualize children, crushing their innocence, essentially grooming them and making them ripe for victimization by predators. These grooming techniques are not new and have been widely reported on. After Disney's debacle, where just last year Disney World Park employee Paul Veal was arrested and charged with over 900 counts of child porn, you find it surprising that Disney would even come close to doing anything that could be remotely seen as the sexualization of children. So back to Jeannie. Would you allow someone that so blatantly promotes these types of hypersexualized techniques to babysit your children? Likely not. So why would Disney, supposedly a children's brand, hand the reins of programming and promotion power over to a man like Jeannie? Is the power of the DEI movement so strong that Disney would risk the safety and mental health of your children to submit to their woke demands? Promoting drag queens is probably one genie Disney should have kept in the bottle. Let us know what you think in the comments below and stay tuned for our upcoming reports. We have many sources coming to us inside Disney, America First Legal putting out a letter, EEOC complaint, and sign up to be an American swiper at O'KeefeMediaGroup.com slash swiper to join us to investigate and expose corruption lies everywhere that lies are found, and stay tuned.